Hello and welcome to the Red Men TV. I've got the honour of having the true Geordie in the well, in the Skype call with me. Um, Jordi, I wanted to I wanted to pick your brain and steal some of your followers. No, I'm I'm kidding. I, don't know. <laughs> I, I actually do want to do both of those. Um, but seriously, You're welcome, mate. I want to I want to speak to you about why now, then. But uh, look, I know you had when we were linked with Sissoko, You had some different views uh, to yeah. a lot of Liverpool fans on Sissoko. What's why now, like? Wijnaldum is quite similar to Sissoko. Like, you, you'll turn up and then you'll see the highlights of him on Match of the Day. And then you'll sort of, you'll leave a mark in your brain of, oh, he looks a decent player. But because you don't follow Newcastle, he might not do anything for another eight, eight games. But because he had that one good match of the day, it kind of sticks in your head, doesn't it? Yeah. And then you don't see him for another eight games. And like, but to Newcastle fans during those eight games, we're like, where the fuck is this lad? Like, you know, we know he's got talent in Wijnaldum. Um, he scored quite a lot of goals, 11 goals in his first Premier League season. You can't complain at that for a midfielder, but I'm still going to complain about him, right? And Because, well, four of those goals came against Norwich in one game. Yeah. And they all came he, at home, didn't they? Yeah, the, he, he doesn't play away. He's marriage material. Um, <laughs> and he, he scores goals, but he doesn't do anything else in the game a lot of the time. And I, I know people might think, well... He's an attacking midfielder, but from a midfielder, you want them to grab a hold of the ball and 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 open the game up, like what Marnie I think will do for you. I don't think Wijnaldum's a Marnie at all. Um, Wijnaldum's a little bit like Frank Lampard, but not when he played for Chelsea, when he played for England. Okay. Like he disappears a lot in games. He'll pop up with a goal, uh, but I think if you're going to get the best out of a Wijnaldum, the whole team will have to be structured around him, and I. I think he's definitely capable of doing good things for Liverpool, especially under Klopp, because motivation was a big problem for Wijnaldum. So frustrating seeing a lad so talented, just just walk, walking around the pitch, can't be bothered. And I've seen a lot of Liverpool fans tweeting as making excuses. And some valid points, you know, like Steve McLaren was his manager. You know, he had Newcastle play as his teammates. Obviously, that's going to change. He's going to have to be better. But I genuinely don't know how this is going to go. Uh, he, he could be really good for you, or he could do nothing for you. Well, a, a couple of questions, then you bring up a couple of things. I mean, am I right in saying he played mostly from the left-hand side for you last season? Yeah, he was cutting in from the left. He, he would basically arrive in the box um, as Sissoko was getting and down the right-hand side. So, I suppose, for, for Liverpool, that's Coutinho's spot. You know, we played a 4-2-3-1, that's Phil Coutinho's spot. One of the things that I thought that he might he might bring to this side, and, and, you know, I might be wrong here because I did watch him on Match of the Day, and he did make a mark on me, you're exactly right. He is a Match of the Day-style highlights player. <laughs> it, but when I went to see, you, see us against Hughes, when you beat us 2-0 last season, he was man of the match. And that's, that's the only eyeball test I had on him last season. Yeah. But the pace that he injected into those counter attacks was phenomenal. And if he can bring a little bit of that to Liverpool, that's something we haven't got. Yeah, he. he remember when Wayne Rooney back in the day would get the ball from deep and sort of and, and run, and he had that injection of pace. He has got that about him. He just doesn't use it enough. That is the frustrating thing. It, he just seems to. It's like he can't be bothered sometimes. So um, maybe the issue was. He kind of accepted Newcastle were doomed. Halfway through the season, I seen a massive change in him. But the talent is there, mate. And if you if you centre the team around him, maybe Coutinho on the left, and him as a number ten, I think number ten is where he wants to play. Um, it could be brilliant. It, it could. But as a Newcastle fan, I'm not really disappointed to see him go. To be honest, like he just didn't turn up so many times. When you when you're on your when you fight at the bottom. You need your big players to deliver. And he was one of the main culprits. One of our record signings just went missing so often. So £25 million, from what you're saying there, it looks like a good deal for Newcastle. It, it, considering, I know he's got talent, but all I can go off is what I've seen of him last season. A lot of people might look at this in a year's time and think, what a load of rubbish, he's had a great season. But all I can go off is what I've seen of him this yeah. season. And based on that, when you're a team struggling like Newcastle, you need people who are going to dig in and make that presence felt and always 
give me the ball. Give us the ball. I'm not frightened. He didn't do that enough. And although the quality is there, we need players who are going to get us out of that uh, championship. And um, I, I don't mind him going. I'm yeah. not. I'm not too bothered. Okay. Well, um, I suppose the, the next question is: Was there a change in his attitude when Benitez came in? You said he didn't apply himself under McLaren. <clears throat> I think that the, if if Benitez had been there earlier, I think Benitez would have gotten a lot more out of him. But I think by that point, it was just sunk we were done and um, he was already just wanting away at that point Okay, all right, Uh, Jordi thank you very much for that mate, Uh, appreciate your thoughts on Wijnaldum Um, look forward I suppose to your collaborations with the likes of Talk Norwich City next season Um, I'm sure you'll be, I'm sure you'll still be around giving your views on the Premier League no doubt mate and I'm looking forward to seeing the videos yeah, mate, cheers, Paul, and uh, for what it's worth, I hope he does well for you. Like, you know, it'd be good to see Liverpool up there challenging. And uh, I think with Mane, Wijnaldum, Sturridge, if you can keep him fit, Coutinho, Firmino, I mean, that is that is blistering. And um, you might be the dark horse next season. Oh, actually. that's what I like to fucking uh-huh. hear, mate. That's what I want to hear. Might say. happen. That, that's brilliant. You've put me in a right good mood now. I'm off to fucking America to watch it. Enjoy the rest of your day, Paul. <laughs> you too. Enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers.